we are live. What is up, guys? How is it going? You got Daisha here coming to you live from Amadon, North Dakota, and Naomi from Miami, Florida. Good um, to see you guys. <laughs> Super excited for you to be here with us, guys. As you guys start jumping on, make sure to drop a comment right below just so we can give you a proper shout out for spending a little bit of time here with us today. You guys can see the title. It's video games, right? The good, the bad, and the remedy. So we're going to be talking about uh, quite a few things here on the broadcast. But the first thing that I really want to go into here is what exactly is the reason that we get so addicted to video games, right? What's the reason that it happens? What, what's happening within our bodies, right? Well, the two main reasons that we get so addicted to video games is first, because our mind likes patterns, right? You, you'll recognize this throughout your day. Your mind likes patterns. But the second thing is that our mind has to be able to gain the six human needs. Now, what are the six human needs? We created this little video for you guys, so let's go ahead and show it now. The six basic human needs are certainty. It's our need to feel in control and to know what's coming next so that we can feel secure. It's the need for basic comfort, the need to avoid pain and stress, and also to create pleasure. Our need for certainty is a survival mechanism. Uncertainty. The need for the unknown, change, or new stimuli. Significance. We all need to feel important, special, unique, or needed. Love and connection. A strong feeling of closeness with someone or something. Love is the oxygen of life. It's what we all want and need most. Growth, an expansion of capacity, capability, or understanding. Contribution, a sense of service and focus on helping, giving to, and supporting others. So let's talk about the first three basic needs and how video games fulfill them. Starting with certainty, we all have the need to be in control and feel safe and secure. And that is something that video games provide. You have the certainty that no matter how many times you log on and off, you're always going to be the same character. You're going to have a mission to complete. You know what your skills are, you know what your tools are, and you know where you're going. The second thing that it feels, and this is what I find humorous about our needs. We have the need for certainty, and then we have the need for uncertainty. We all need variety. We all need to feel something new. We all need change and adventure. And that is something that video games definitely provide. That's the whole excitement about accomplishing a mission, about scaling and going up levels and winning and trying out different tools and weapons and having to learn new skills. And the third thing that it feels is significance. We all have the need to feel special, unique, and one of a kind. And that is something else that video games provides. How? Well, without you, there is no game. You are in control. And not only that, when you are in a game with mutual players, the success of the entire team depends on you. And that gives you the significance that you, you know, need. When it comes to video games or getting addicted to anything in life, the other three human needs that get met from video games are love and connection, growth and contribution. But how is it? How are those three things met? Well, with connection, when it comes to video games, our minds naturally start creating a positive connection to the characters within the game, especially because we are the ones controlling them. We also get growth from that. As we progress throughout each level, our skills, our quickness, our mind starts growing and we are able to contribute because when we play the video game, we can see that our efforts are progressing the game, right? Without us, the video game doesn't operate. So we are creating that contribution. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get back in to the live segment. All right, and we are back. So just give a few shout outs here. Uh, Rosie, what is up? Hope you are doing awesome. Thanks for joining us live here. Uh, we got two different Facebook users here. Facebook users, do me a favor. Right above, you're going to see this little link. 
when you tap on it, it's going to have you give permission for us to be able to see that. So Naomi, you want to go ahead and take over from here? Sure. Now that you guys know why video games are so addicting, I thought I would ask Daisha a couple of questions because Daisha, I know that for a while you were really, really into video games. And I guess my question is, what were you feeling when you were playing video games? What was going on? Well, for me, I mean, that was kind of like my escape, right? There was a lot of times like throughout my childhood and you guys that have heard my story kind of know this as well. Um, I just didn't get along with my family. I didn't love myself. I didn't like the environment that I was in. So with video games, I was able to take that as my way of escaping from the outside world and getting to a place where I felt safe. I felt like I was growing. I felt like I was contributing. I felt like I was basically powerful, right? During that time where I felt unpowerful during the other time. So yeah, I mean, I just felt alive, I guess I could say when I was used to be addicted to video right. games. Right, so it was kind of like an escape, right? Yeah, for sure. So then when did you notice that it was actually becoming a problem? I noticed it was a problem probably um, <laughs> when I was working a full-time job. So I, I was working a full-time job and going to school at the same time. Um, and I noticed that I was spending all of my extra time with video games. My friends would be like, hey, Daisha, do you want to come out and like, you know, go to a party with us or do this or do that? And I'm like, uh, you know, like I'm going, I, I don't think I can do that, right? I would make some type of excuse just so I didn't have to be around people. And that actually caused me to where I ended up being around no people and my social skills went from kind of being up here to completely crashing down. Um, and then I realized, you know, maybe I should start spending time doing something else that's more productive and actually beneficial to my life. Yeah, so you noticed that it started affecting you and when you noticed that, what did you do? What did you decide to do and how did you change it? Well, I noticed that I wasn't going to be able to just cut cold turkey. You know, I think that that's something that kind of a lot of people deal with. They're like, you know what? Like, yeah, I'm addicted to video games. I'm just going to stop playing them altogether. Um, but I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do that because whenever I was out with family or doing anything else, it's all I could think about. It was literally an addiction for me. So I started taking back like an hour each day. I was spending say seven, eight, nine hours playing video games throughout the day. So I would cut back an hour once every single day um, until eventually I was only spending about an hour a day with video games. Yeah, no, it's true. You can't, you can't go cold turkey. You can't uh, because basically the way the body works, the body uh, rec records a pleasure in the same way. It doesn't matter if it's literally heroin, if it's food, if it's video games, if it's social media or it's likes on Facebook. So you have to treat it the same way. You got to start tapering down. You got to start tapering down. It's the only way. Exactly. So Naomi, let me ask you some questions then, because you do a lot of research, right, on um, well, addiction, video games, the mind. So what exactly is happening within our brain when we start becoming addicted to video games or really anything in life? Yeah, it's really cool because there's a couple of stuff going on. In the first place, we already know that the brain just loves creating patterns. It loves habits because it does that for to store energy, just to save energy. And the problem with that is it doesn't know that what it's doing is not good for us. You know, the second thing that happens is that when it registers pleasure, whenever we do anything that's pleasurable, the brain releases the neuroreceptor, the neurotransmitter dopamine. And what that does is it floods the front part of our brain. Okay. Now, this is why we feel so good. Now, there's a couple of things that goes on. Of course, the body absolutely loves this. So what it does is it tries to create another instance like that. It wants to continue feeling this, right? So this is the problem because at the same time, what the brain is doing is it's trying to control the balance between the big spike of the dopamine and when our brain is in a normal state. So what happens? What does this mean for us? What this means is that every time we have to up the ante a little bit more to feel what we felt at the beginning. This is why we have to either play more or take more of a substance or, mm. get, or participate in riskier activities because we're not getting the same feeling that we got initially. Man, that makes so much sense. So like you were saying, whether it's heroin, whether it's anything, like your mind will become addicted to it over time. 
And then just like everything else, you're going to get to that point where it doesn't feel like you're getting that high anymore. So then you have to play more of it to be able to get that high feeling um, that you're actually craving. That's so crazy. It's funny because then it, it continues to do more, like because then you you have that problem, right? So you have to do more to get that. But then what happens when you're doing the activity? You're not getting the same pleasure. So then it starts affecting your mood. And this is why this is why people that are in any form of addiction at the beginning, it all starts great. You know, it's all fantastic and it just feels so good. But after a while, you begin to chase the actual thing and it doesn't even become about the pleasure anymore because it's a mood thing. And so basically it's what it's done. It's controlled our mood. And this is why it ends up being bad for us. And it's something that we can't avoid. The body naturally does this. The good thing is being aware of it so that you don't let it happen or let it get out of control. Man. And, and we're only about 5% conscious throughout the day, guys. You guys hear me say that a lot in our videos. So like she was saying, we can't control it. Our body is doing this, right? We program what our body is doing. So just be aware of that um, while you guys are listening to the rest of this message here. So, and I wanted to say something else oh, because, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to mention that this is in particular really, really important for teens, okay? Because teens are even more susceptible to this because of two reasons. Their brains are underdeveloped. We know that the brain doesn't really mature till 25 and it's completely, completely set at 35, right? So it's forming. Now, when the dopamine hits the brain, it hits the front, the front part of the receptors of the brain, which is the same part of the brain that is responsible for impulse control control and decision making. Now, teens are already already over emotional. We know this because we've been there and and we're not very good at making decisions and we're very impulsive. So then you combine this with the actual form of addiction and this is why it's so much more difficult for teens to one control and two to control their mood. Man, so you so do you think that it's a good idea then for like people that to to basically become aware of it now before they start hitting the age 25, 35, because then after that, it's going to be a lot harder for them exactly. to be able to kind of get out of that addiction. Absolutely. Because you know that, you know how hard it is right now for us to change a pattern because basically by 35, your brain is set. It does not want to change. They pretty much say that however long you've been practicing something, it takes about half the amount of that time to be able to break that habit and create a new one. Now, the thing that happens is that most of us are so unaware of our brains. No one teaches us anything about our brain, about our bodies or about our minds and much less how they work together. And this is why I feel it's so important for us to know these things because if we're aware of them we can say oh my god for example i'm being very impulsive right now but i know that this is normal because my brain is not developed or when i'm having an addiction oh my god i really feel like this urge to con to do it and i can't control myself but i know why this is happening this is not me i'm not weak I don't have a problem. There's nothing wrong with me because we always think there's something wrong with us. But this way, understanding that it's our body, our body is kind of like a quantum computer. Yep. Okay. It runs and it processes in the very same way. So when you start understanding, okay, this is just a process. I understand what's going on. It's not me. I can control it. Then we start to change the picture and then we start to change our lives. Exactly. And guys, our life is like a video game, right? She was just saying like, we're like quantum computers. We are like living video games. That's basically what it is. There's a certain process that you have to go through. And depending on what path you choose, right, that's going to depend on the actual destination, the result that you're able to bring into you. So that is just nuts. And Naomi, you, you usually give me like a lot of statistics when we're talking. So yeah. what yeah. type of person like is the most addicted to video games that you've seen throughout the statistics? Well, the statistics are pretty interesting. Let's take here the United States. Eight to 10% of Americans are addicted to either video games or social media. That's a pretty big percent. And out of those, here are the numbers. 63% are Caucasian. That's crazy. 12% are Latin. Yeah, 13 to 14% are black and 17% are Asian. And the interesting thing about this is I thought that it was mainly like teens, teens that were the most addicted, yeah. but actually the most addicted are 25 year olds, 25 year olds. And the ones that play the most out of all, the people that play the most video games, gamer, number one gamers are 35 year olds. And do you think that's because they, they're at that 35 peak? Like they've developed the mind so much that they're just addicted now and that's it? Yeah. yeah, you know how it is. We 
since we don't know what's going on, we're just set in our ways. You know, sometimes we think, oh, that's just what I do. That's just me. That's just what I like. And we think we can't change because we don't know what's going on. And so, yeah, we just stick to that behavior, even though after a while, it just doesn't make us happy anymore. Yeah. But we don't know anything different exactly. or that it's even a problem. Exactly. But we know we're not happy. Deep, deep down inside, we all know this, guys. Deep down inside, we always know when there's something missing when we're unhappy, when there's something wrong, it's just, we don't listen to that little voice, you know? We've kind of run like a computer. We've been running on patterns for so long that we just do things and we don't even know why we do them anymore. It's just a habit. That's what it is, it's a habit. It's just bad habits and it's changing those bad habits. And that's why I like how you did it. Uh, you started changing your habits uh, slowly and incrementally. And do you wanna tell them about what we created for them? Yeah, for sure. So guys, I know that some people are going to be asking, okay, like, where do I start? Right? Like, yes, I know that you had a problem where you realized that you had a problem. And I'm at that state now. How do I start on that process? Well, me and Naomi actually created a free document for you guys. You guys can actually see it here in the comments below. It's going to look like this. Go ahead and click on that. It's the video games workbook that we created for you guys. And basically what this is, is it's going to have you with documenting how long are you spending per day on video games? How much time do you want to not spend on video games for out a 30 day period? And then lastly, where do you want to redirect that energy? Because what's going to happen, guys, is you need to be able to fill that time with something, right? You can't just say, you know what, I'm not playing video games for an hour and then do nothing, right? Your mind is going to feel like you're going crazy. You need to have some place to be able to redirect that energy in. So when you're able to actually go through the questions that we have inside of this document for you guys, then you'll be able to see, okay, what things do I enjoy? Where can I redirect this energy? Do I want to be reading? Do I want to be meditating? Do I want to be spending time with family? Whatever it may be. And that way you can start still getting that same feeling, that dopamine feeling that you get from those video games, but you'll get it from a different source that's actually beneficial to you. Now, one thing I want to say, uh, I don't know if we actually mentioned it throughout this, video games aren't bad, right? Video games, we're not saying that for, if you're playing video games, you're a bad person or that you're not a productive person because that's not the case by any means, mm -hmm. right? Like when you, when you play video games, it does help your mind grow right? You are able to think quicker. You're able to do things quicker because as you're going throughout these harder and harder levels, your mind's growing in that type of way. We just want to make sure that you guys are doing it just like everything else in moderation. So anything else you wanted to say on that, Naomi? Well, no, that's actually a great point because uh, people that play video games have a different mind and actually video games in balance are actually good for you. One, they improve your eyesight. And two, they improve your focus. And actually the people that play video games are really, really smart. They're people who actually like solving problems and who like challenges. So imagine if you took all that energy, all those skills and decided to put it into something else. Because remember guys, it's energy. That's what we are. This is just a suit, just like this is a shirt that's wearing, covering our body. It's energy. It's where you put your energy, where you put your attention. It doesn't matter if it's thoughts. It doesn't matter if it's things. Remember, like Daisha said, you can't just go cold turkey because it's energy. You need to redirect it. It's just like when you have a bad thought. You can't think, don't think bad thoughts. Don't think bad <laughs> thoughts. Don't think bad thoughts. You can't do that. It's like saying, uh, there's no pig elephant. There's no pig elephant. You know, you can't do that. But what you can say is, okay, I'm going to think a better thought. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes when you're trying to do a, when you're trying to create a new habit, when you're trying to create a new pattern or do a new thing, you redirect the energy and focus it on where you want. It's going to be a little hard at the beginning, right? Oh, yeah. oh it's going to be super difficult, super, super difficult. But if you're super serious, if you're actually serious about making a difference in your life, about redirecting that energy, you'll be able to push through it. Right. One thing that I would say that's going to help you with kind of getting over that hurdle is just remember your why as to why you're doing it. Right. That was my biggest thing. Why was I doing it? Because I didn't want to be stuck in my room 24 seven. And I actually wanted to start making money for me to do that. I had to be able to get out of that little space. So just always remember your why. And that'll help you with pushing over that. hurdle. Yeah. And it's something if I can mention something else, like always yeah. try to think of like, uh, it's good to have a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. Like you said, always think of, okay, well, what's my goal? And always try to think of well, what will happen if I don't reach that goal? Because, you know, motivation doesn't last very long. It doesn't. We have to, yeah, we have to. People think that, oh, because you love something, you're going to feel passionate about it all the time. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Work is work. 
Yeah. <laughs> work. That. So, exactly. You just got to do it. But if you do it like this, if you start creating like little anchors in your mind thinking, oh my God, I don't want to face that scenario. I don't want to be in six months here, 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 here. Then believe me, when you're feeling like you want to go back or when you're feeling like you want to do exactly what you're not supposed to do, or you don't feel like doing what you're supposed to do, that thought will push you towards the goal. Believe me. <laughs> Exactly. I like that you said that too, doing the worst case scenario. Um, that kind of helped me like, okay, if I don't make this money, that, that means I'm going to have to stay in the same place that I'm at right now. And I don't want to do that. So I love that. Taylor says lab. What's up, my homies? What's up, Taylor? <laughs> Hope you are doing awesome. Thanks for jumping on here with us today. All right. So that is basically it. We are coming up on the end of the broadcast. Did you have our special guest coming up? Um I just messaged our special guest. Uh, I don't know if you want to start talking about it and maybe show the video. All right, sweet. So yeah, guys, what we're, we're wanting to do um, over these next broadcasts now, surprise guys, we're going to be on here every week. Okay, so once a week, you're going to be seeing me right. and Naomi onto a live video every single week. And at the end of that video, we want to be able to give back, right? I feel like that's one of the biggest things, one of the six human needs, we got to be able to contribute, right? So we want to be able to give back. And how we're doing that is actually asking if you guys want to be able to donate to some of the really great causes out there. So we're going to play this little video for one of our good friends. Uh, look, guys, uh, this, just now I'm going to show you live that how little children who are working here with their parents. Wow, that is it's insane. We want to kind of dive a little bit deeper and explain to sure. everyone what exactly yeah. that was. So this is the Grow and Thrive Foundation. Uh, they have been open in India for two and a half years in Punjabi. And basically, they're in charge of 700 kids. Basically, these kids don't have an education. They don't have anything. They don't have any materials. They don't have any supplies. They don't have anything. And they go out to work in the field with their parents. And so this woman and a South African man, I, I forget his name, Carl, um, they decided to create this foundation. And what they do is they provide one meal a day, uh, one cup of milk, and then they educate them every single day. So I thought, you know, what better way to help, you know, you and I, you believe in one education and in two helping children. And this foundation is doing both. They're, they're providing a meal and they're providing education of future for kids because actually if not, these kids are not gonna have a future. And there's many ways to help. It doesn't just have to be financial, although, you know, we will be putting the link, but they do take supplies too, guys. If you guys have pencils, if you guys have pens, if you guys have notebooks, books that you've already read and you want to pass on to them, these kids have nothing. They will be so happy to get anything and anything that you send them, they will be super happy and grateful for. I love it. All right. Well, we don't have our special guest on uh, here with us. We were going to have actually our special guest come on and have her talk a little bit about the foundation, but we weren't able to get her on. So if you guys want to be able to donate, please either reach out to me, Naomi, or click the link that we're going to throw in the comment section below. Um, like I said, we just want to be able to contribute. We want to be able to give back for all the great things and great energy that we're receiving as well. Travel, he posted this. I wanted to uh, kind of show this one. Guys, I'm going to use this live as the centerpiece of my family's Sunday devotion time. You provided mm -hmm. such amazing value in the area of psychology on this one. Fam, got to chew on this one. Thank you. <laughs> I've got three gamers in my family that need this info. How cool is that? All right. So that is basically it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. Naomi, do you have anything else you want to say to the people? Nothing, just you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and kill it. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll stay Thank there. you so much for hanging out with us. Grab your workbook below. Grab that one right now. See you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.